government still appears hell-bent on implementing its ambitious public utility vehicle modernization program. Over the past few weeks and months, many rollouts of so-called e-jeepneys and other types of modern jeepneys were announced or implemented. But many are questioning whether government and the private stakeholders are fully ready to implement the said program. Motoring Forum looks at the numbers and the players involved in the said program. Over the years and many changes in administration, government efforts to modernize the country's mass transportation have been stymied by one big problem. What to do with the jeepney? Economists and transportation experts have been saying the jeepney, once the icon of Philippine ingenuity and culture, has become an anachronism even in the decades before the turn of the millennium. Over the years, strong opposition from the jeepney operators, drivers and associations, and commuters who refuse to be weaned from their favorite mode of cheap transport within towns and even between provinces have derailed plans to phase out jeepneys and replace them outright with more efficient, safe, and convenient forms of transport. This has forced government to shift gears from total phase-out to modernization of the jeepney. The concept is to bring the jeepney up to the modern age, with more efficient powertrains and reconfigured to provide better safety, comfort, and convenience to commuters. This has led to the formulation of programs to encourage jeepney drivers, operators, and associations to replace old and dilapidated units with vehicles still falling within the basic description of a jeepney with engines and powertrains that meet environment and other safety standards. The latest effort is called the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program, one of the major programs of the Duterte administration, perhaps the only administration that appears steadfast to the commitment to truly modernize the jeepney and jeepney operations among other types of PUVs. The Department of Transportation issued Department Order No. 2017-011, the Omnibus Guidelines on the Planning and Identification of Public Road Transportation Services and Franchise Issuance, aka the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program. The program envisions a land transport system that is well-managed and environmentally sustainable, enables a stable, sustainable, and dignified livelihood for both drivers and operators, and provide commuters with safe and comfortable everyday transport. To accomplish this, government is embarking on a multi-pronged strategy involving the DOTR and related agencies, the Department of Finance, Department of the Trade and Industry, and stakeholders in the private sector, including automotive manufacturers and distributors. Among the main pillars of this strategy is to encourage, through financial and other incentives, transport groups as well as local automotive manufacturers and distributors to participate in the modernization program. Governments set out new guidelines and approved standards for various classifications of PUVs, including jeepneys, setting new configurations, including where doors should be placed on the side facing the sidewalk, cabin height, allowing for passengers to stand without stooping, among others. PUVs must also be powered by engines that meet strict emission standards or by electric or hybrid powertrains. The modernization program has drawn mixed reaction from transport groups. Some are actively supporting the program and looking to benefit from the incentives. These include the following. Pangkalhatang Sangguniang Manila and Suburb Drivers Association Nationwide Incorporated, One Transport Equipment Aggregator and Management Inc. or One Team, Federation of Jeepney Operators and Drivers Association of the Philippines, Alliance of Transport Operators and Drivers Association of the Philippines. Others continue to oppose the program and have been threatening mass actions, like transport strikes, to make their objectives known. These include the following. Pinagkaisang samahan ng mga tuper and operators nationwide. Samahan ng mga tuper at operator tutul sa phase-out. Stop and Go Coalition. Vehicle manufacturers and distributors, including assemblers and distributors of electric-powered vehicles, as well as automobile body manufacturers, have come out in support of the program. These include groups and auto companies such as the following. Electric Vehicle Association of the Philippines Automotive Body Manufacturers Association of the Philippines Isuzu Motors Philippines Truck Manufacturers Association of the Philippines Pilipinas Taj Auto Group Distributor of Tata Vehicles in the Philippines 
Local Vehicle Bodybuilders Centro, Almazora, Hino, Santa Rosa, and Del Monte. Already, these groups and companies have come out with their versions of modern jeepneys and PUVs. Government has an ambitious timetable and targets for the PUV modernization program. From 2018 to 2020, government hopes to have seen the replacement of an estimated 180,000 to 200,000 PUVs 15 years or older that are supposed to have been put out of public transport service under already existing regulations. The sheer number of PUVs needing replacement begs the question, can government meet the target? Can government, financial institutions, and private banks supporting the program process the necessary loans to help jeepney drivers, cooperatives, and associations looking to join the program? Can local automotive companies, assemblers, bodybuilders meet the demand, if any, for new PUVs? It is now the second half of the year 2018. Let's look at the recent accomplishments, developments, and movements related to the PUV, and more particularly, the Jeepney Modernization Program. The DOTR says it is rolling around 200 units of modern jeepneys before the scheduled State of the Nation address. These e-jeepneys will be deployed to seven routes in various cities of Metro Manila. Government is targeting to launch at least 3,000 of such units by the end of 2018. According to Transport Undersecretary Thomas Orbos, it has gotten the commitment of some transport groups to attain the 3,000 target. The Development Bank of the Philippines is providing 1.5 billion pesos to kickstart the lending program for the PUV. Government has set aside an initial 2.2 billion pesos in subsidy for drivers or operators seeking to replace old units with modern jeepneys at 80,000 pesos per unit. Fedojap and Altodap have signed a memorandum of agreement with Echo Jeep Incorporated for fleet management and replacement units. MCCI Connection Transport Services Corporation signed an agreement with 17 transport groups for fleet consolidation and supply of new PUV units. Pasang Masda has signed a deal with Land Bank for soft loans to acquire 60 modern jeepneys for franchise routes in Quezon City. Cost per unit is 1.6 million pesos. Estimated monthly amortization is 24,000 pesos per unit. Interest rate is under 6%. One team has signed a similar agreement with Land Bank for the acquisition of an unspecified number of modern jeepneys. The Department of Energy, Meralco, UniOil, and QEV Incorporated, a provider of electric vehicle powertrains, are working together to set up battery charging and swapping stations in strategic locations for electric powered public utility vehicles. PUV Bodybuilder Centro says its 1.5-hectare plan can only manufacture at most 6,000 modern jeepney bodies a year. LTFRB assisted in an initiative that led to the operation of 45 solar-powered jeepneys supplied by Star 8 Green Technology Corporation to supplement public transport in Tacloban. Tata Philippines studying the possibility of locally assembling a public utility vehicle for Philippine roads. When one adds up the number of modern PUVs already in operation being rolled out or being planned to roll out, the sum falls very short of government targets and may be cause for pessimism for the success of the modernization program. Still, the increasing number of agreements and initiatives entered into or undertaken by large transport associations or federations for fleet acquisition and or management give rise to optimism that finally, an honest-to-goodness transport modernization will see the jeepney being reinvented into an efficient, environment-friendly, sustainable, and profitable mode of transport in the modern world. It may be too late for any major change or tweak to the program. All many of stakeholders can do is to hope government really follows through with its promises and holds steadfast to already stated policies and programs. It is really no time to let Ninga Skugan rear its ugly head in a program so vital to the commuters, the community, and yes, the jeepney transport sector itself.